Oasis Audio presents The English Sun, The Amish Millionaire, Part 1 by Wanda E. Brunstetter and Jean Brunstetter Read for you by Rebecca Gallagher Chapter 1, Akron, Ohio One thing Joel Byler couldn't stand was a dirty car. While the vehicle he'd bought today might be a classic, the exterior needed some help. Joel was thankful his girlfriend, Christy Palmer, had gone shopping in Holmes County with her mother and wouldn't be back until Sunday evening. That would give him all weekend to spend with his new car. As soon as he got it washed, he might see if Tom Hunter was free to take a test drive with him. Joel leaned against his work truck and stared at the tuxedo black 1967 Corvette Stingray convertible. What a beaut! Even with a layer of dust, it was any man's dream. Well, Joel's, anyway. He'd wanted a car like this for a long time and had been watching the ads, as well as going to classic car auctions every chance he got. The sale he'd attended this morning had been surprisingly successful. When this gem came up for auction, Joel couldn't resist. A few others apparently wanted the Corvette as badly as he, for the bidding shot up quickly. Before Joel realized it, the highest bid was $200,000. In desperation, he upped the bid by $50,000 and won. The only downside was he'd gone way over his budget to get the car. Even though, with its 435-horsepower engine, the model in this good condition usually sold for more than $300,000. As a general contractor, cash availability was often feast or famine. Before the most recent job, a big office complex, Joel's cash flow had been on the meager side. Now, after using more than half the money he'd earned from that job to buy the car, the amount left was not enough to pay all his subcontractors. But Joel felt certain his bid on a huge job would be chosen, and the advance from that would get him out of the jam he'd put himself in. Once he got paid, he'd have money to spare, even after he paid everyone else, and he would finally be able to get the engagement ring Christy deserved. Joel had already proposed, and she'd said yes, but he didn't have the funds for a ring yet, at least not one big enough to prove his love for her. Christy had assured Joel she didn't need a fancy ring, but Joel wanted her to have the best. They'd both been saving money for their future together, and would eventually use it on a down payment for a house. Joel turned his attention back on the Corvette. The first order of business was to wash the outside. He paused a minute to study himself in the side mirror, realizing he too needed a bit of sprucing up. Besides the streaks of dirt on his face, his thick dark hair could use a trim. He'd have to get it done before seeing Christy again, and even up his short beard. As a business owner, he needed to make a good impression on his customers, but he didn't care about his appearance when he was at home. Joel turned on the outdoor faucet, but before he could grab the end of the hose, it started twirling around under the water pressure, and a blast of chilly water hit Joel square in the face. It also gave his clothes a good soaking, especially the T-shirt now sticking to him like glue. He jumped back and wiped his eyes, then grabbed the flailing hose and pointed it at the Corvette. This was not the way he'd planned to take a bath, even though the cool water felt good. It took Joel almost an hour to get the car clean and dry. He used a sponge to clean off a smudge he'd missed and then rubbed the shiny spot clean with a chamois. About to go inside his single wide, Joel paused, watching his friend Tom pull up. Perfect timing, Joel grinned. Tom got out of his SUV and sauntered up the driveway, where Joel's new car was parked. Wow, where'd you get the good-looking vet? Tom let out a low whistle while checking it out. Got it at a car auction this morning. Joel pointed to the shiny black hood. What do you think? Tom blew out his breath. You've either come into a large sum of money, or you're deep in debt. She's sweet, all right, but this classic had to be expensive. It was, Joel admitted. 
So how'd you swing it? I recently got paid for a big job I completed, so I had the money to pay cash. He chuckled, pulling his fingers through his scruffy short beard. Well, to be honest, I actually wrote a check. Tom continued to eyeball the car, walking around it and then opening the passenger door. Why don't you take me for a spin? I bet this vet has some get up and go. You read my mind. I was planning to drive over to your place to show it to you. Joel tugged on his wet shirt tail, wringing out the moisture still left. Give me a few minutes to get cleaned up, and then we'll take a ride. Sounds good. Tom followed Joel up to his single wide. Mind telling me what you paid for the car? Joel hesitated a few seconds. Um, got it for $250,000. Tom's mouth dropped open, and he blinked his pale blue eyes a couple of times. You're kidding, right? Nope, it was my final bid. Wow. At this rate, you'll be living in a mobile home the rest of your life and never get your dream house built, let alone marry your girlfriend. When Christy sees your new purchase, I wonder what she'll have to say. Joel cringed. I don't plan on letting her see it, at least not right away, so please don't say anything, okay? Tom slid his fingers across his lips. She won't hear it from me, that's a promise. Pointing to the Corvette, Tom's blue eyes darkened. How are you going to keep something like this baby hidden from her, Joel? Doesn't Christy ever go in your garage? I'm not keeping it there. I'm going to put the vet in my shop, under a tarp. Joel's deceit didn't bother him that much. He figured he'd tell Christy about the car when the time was right. Maybe after he'd given her a ring and a wedding date had been set. They could go out to dinner in the Corvette to celebrate.